Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, my name is Casey Plett. I am a writer and an editor. And today I want to talk to you about bravery. Um, specifically two things. First of all, I want to talk about uh, when bravery or courage uh, is a farce, a false story, something we tell ourselves to fool ourselves. And then second, I want to talk about when bravery or courage is real and a necessary fount of personal strength um, and increasingly uh, a must, I would say, in our um, increasingly horrifying world. Um, a housekeeping note before I start, I will be talking about my experience as a transgender woman to illustrate what I believe about bravery just because it is my personally easiest way into the subject, but this is what I believe about bravery in every sense and not just in relation to transsexuality. Uh, so number one, when bravery is a farce. Let me tell you, um, so when I, when I first came out, um, as trans, and that was about over a decade ago, um, there was this phrase that I heard all the time. You're so brave. And it was always said by a very sweet, well-meaning person. Um, the idea behind it, I suppose, was that in a transphobic world that does not largely understand trans people, um, that to simply come out and transition is de facto a brave act. Uh, on its surface, sure, this, this idea can, can make a lot of sense, and yet inside me, um, it, it always felt a little off the mark. It rankled me inside. Now back then I couldn't have fully said why, but I think I could have articulated this. It felt false. Uh, there was something intrinsically false about this very nice compliment that very nice people were attempting to give me. Eventually, um, I started talking to other trans people about this, a lot of whom had the same experience, and um, they heard the yeah, it's so, you're so brave, um, in, in the same way. And they felt the same way that I did. Um, it felt wrong to be as assigned bravery in this way, um, perhaps because most of us had once tried not to be trans or not to transition, and that had brought us to the end of a very short road. Um, and I, I would say, actually, this experience is so consistent that in, so, that, in, that in some trans subcultures, brave is actually like kind of a loaded word. Um, one friend had this analogy, if you will uh, indulge me with it. Um, imagine like, you know, you're, you're running from a bear through a forest and, and the bear, like it's gaining on you and you know there's a cabin just a little ways away. Um, but the bear is faster than you, and it's faster than you, and you don't know if you're going to make it. Um, and then all of a sudden, miraculously, there's that cabin. You get in, you slam the door, you lock it just in time, you're leaning against the door, you're panting, your life is flashed before your eyes. And, and a person inside turns and says, like, wow, you're so brave for outrunning that bear. <laughs> or, as a short story by Lori Moore said, um, in, a, in a completely different context, uh, quote, everyone admires us for our courage. They have no idea what they are talking about. Courage requires options, end quote. Uh, that is from a story, by the way, called People Like Us Are the Only People Here. It's very good. Um, and indeed, I would agree with that. And um, that seems to make sense to me. And yet, there's a second side to this bravery idea. Because too, if I think, about, if I think inside myself, I know I have done brave and courageous things in my life when I didn't have to. Um, like, um, and, and it'll, you know, it, all, it almost seems to me now like a silly example, but um, I kept thinking about it I was, as I was writing this, the first time that I had the guts to go wear a dress outside on a crowded city street, get on the bus, get on the train, I just knew strangers were gonna react in some way and I, and I wasn't quite sure. Um, I remember the first day that I did that. And in retrospect, if I really think about it, if I feel inside me what that feeling was, I suppose it was something like bravery that got me out of the house because I didn't have to leave the house that day. And it's funny, you know, I, I thought about that over other traumas that I have survived that were uh, far grimmer than anxiously wearing a dress on a bus. Um, but with those, those, those other traumas, they were events that uh, they just happened to me and I survived them, but I didn't really have a choice in the matter. But choosing to leave the house on that particular day, like sure, okay, 13 years later, I will think about that time and I feel it to me and I think, okay, I, if I had to, sure, yes. Maybe that was brave and maybe no one else knew it, but I knew it. And my memory of what it feels like to summon that courage is an unseen thing. It is personal and it is deep inside me. And it exists in no relation to whether someone hears a story and says, yeah, wow, that was really brave of you. It's a, it's a story inside of me and it, that it's, as a storyteller, it, it, it's not, I'm not sure it's one I can even give to someone else. I think as humans, I was trying to think about 
the farcical side of bravery and the true real side of courage. I think as humans, it feels very comforting when we assign bravery and other people. Um, and, 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 I, and I feel that feeling, I feel it all the time. Um, you know, um, people who are really putting skin on the line for environmental justice, that's definitely a pretty salient one lately. Uh, sex workers continuing to work and survive along increasing criminalization. Um, as of this week, our, you know, our nation's, uh, our nation's veterans. You know, and all those cases, I feel that feeling that bubbles up me like, oh man, you know, God bless those people. That is a pretty damn brave thing to, and then I think when I had that feeling like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know I felt weird about this when it was directed at me. And then I think, where is that feeling coming from? When I want to assign someone bravery, when I feel that, what's causing it? And here's what I think I know. I think that when I look at other humans and I assign them bravery, I feel like I can fall back into my bed and I sleep more soundly. I question less what is needed for myself. There is a gentle, peaceful complacency that surges through my body and it feels so good. It is so much more about me than about the supposedly brave person, their actions, and how they see themselves. It is a story that operates independently of that person. And when I have that feeling, when I, when I think about it that way, you know, I don't think I like that. It doesn't feel productive to me. For me, real bravery, the good kind, the kind that is true, a story that is inside me that is powerful, it is a private experience. It is a solitary, it's an internal thing. No one can assign it to you and neither can anyone take it away. It's the kind of thing that lifts me back out of bed, lifts me out of complacency. I bring this story to you tonight in hopes that you also might question how you think of this term, bravery, and the next time you think that, man, that, that's, people are so brave, you might ask yourself what's happening inside of you and what story you're telling to yourself and whether there's maybe another story of your own personal history inside you that's deeper. I really hate being told that I'm brave. I always will, probably. And yet bravery matters. It matters so much. And especially, uh, I would say, in this Cree's current moments of uh, bigotry and hate and creeping fascism, fascism and environmental collapse and doom from so many corners, I think bravery will be needed. I think it will likely be needed more than we can imagine. A real bravery is a thing that I hope for all of us in this room. Thank you.